Welcome back to the world's worst fishing everybody. So by the time you're watching this video, the hurricane, Hurricane Dorian, should have already skipped around the east coast of Florida. They keep changing the trajectory. Uh, so we don't really know where it's gonna go, but it doesn't anymore look like there's a possibility that it could come here to Tallahassee. Um, but two videos ago, or the video before last, um, I was talking about my air conditioner. So the air conditioner is fixed, everybody. Um, so it's obviously not running right now, but um, yeah, had a company come out and uh, fix it up for us. So we are not burning up anymore in the house. And that's always a good thing. All right, so it's rocket time. Here's the rocket mold. I have a couple of more of those on the way because uh, I'm just absolutely in love with it. So we have a couple different things here. Um, so we're going to do a three layer laminate and we're going to do the rhinestone effect. Um, as you could probably tell from the thumbnail and the title, no surprises. Um, but we're going to do a bottom color that's going to have some of this um, powder in it. This is a mica powder. It's a nice aqua green. We're gonna put some of the tiny blue in it. We actually used this in the last video, 0 0.004, and a little bit of tiny gold, 0 0.004 gold. The middle vein layer is gonna be a tiny amount of blue pearl. And then the top layer is just gonna be straight clear. So, let's get started. Okay, so here's the plastic for our bottom color, and Let's go ahead and get some stuff going here. So this is our powder. Come on. And we only want just a little bit. And I mean just a little bit. As in like that, a little bit. <laughs> so not a lot, working with small things today. All right, let's get a little bit of this blue. And again, not a lot. A little bit goes a long way. That size. And a little bit of this gold. Just a smidge amount. And I have no idea how this is gonna look. I just kind of thought it up as we went along here. This could be kind of neat or kind of not neat. We will find out. But there's kind of similar hues in this as there are to the rhinestones. There's like golds and greens and blues and all that. So that was kind of the thought behind it. But I want it to be a very see-through bait. So I'm not using a whole lot of nothing really. Um, very, very small amounts of each thing. Yeah, you can see that just kind of, you can just kind of see some, some of the effect in there. I actually like that a lot. It needs one large size flake of something just for a little bit of, <clears throat> a little bit of texture. Green, gold, and blue. Hmm, let me think about this one. All right, we're just gonna go to some large square cut hologram, but not a lot just enough that it's kind of here every now and then in the bait. I mean, there's not gonna be, yeah, not a lot. <clears throat> Again, working with small quantities today, <clears throat> but I like that for a bottom color. We're gonna heat this back up just a little bit, and then we're gonna go ahead and pour our bottom layer. Okay, here's our bottom color. All right. Just gonna hold it nice and perfectly still. And on this mold, there's a back bottom fin. And I like to pour it right until it gets just past that, which will be about halfway up the eye socket, um, which is about just right. So we're gonna leave that just like that is. And, uh, and then now we're going to get started on the vein color, which is just gonna be the thin center line and that's where we're gonna attach our rhinestones.
after the fact, of course. Okay, that is looking phenomenal. All right, so a little bit of blue pearl, and this is gonna be for that center vein. All right, we'll see if that's enough. That might be enough. It, it won't be quite as light as the uh, bottom color. Yeah, that, that's looking pretty good. Because you, you want the vein to just kind of be distinct. I don't, on a see-through bait like this, I don't want the top and bottom colors to be translucent and then like a super, super thick vein. That would just kind of not really fit, at least not in my uh, opinion. Okay, so, looks like I may have stirred a little bit of bubbles into that. Yeah, maybe I can kind of let them settle out. I'll meet you back here whenever those bubbles are settled out. So one thing I like to do is I like to take the heat gun and I like to tack up the bottom layer before I pour the next layer. And I like to just hit it long enough, especially on the end there where the two layers are going to merge. I like to tack it up with, with the heat gun. That way I get a strong bond. Because you don't want um, your layers to peel apart, especially on a bait that's not going to be um, clear dipped. So now we're just going to pour our vein. Just a nice thin little blue line here. Okay. Looking good. And we don't want it to go past the eyes, so I'm gonna kinda slightly tilt it. Okay, that's gonna keep it from going all the way up into the nose. You'll see the blue kinda stops up there. That's what I want, that's on purpose. Okay, perfect. Now we're just gonna let that sit, and we kinda have to let this layer set completely up because we have to put these rhinestones on and we have to literally just put them in there one by one by hand and you cannot do that if it's still even remotely gooey um, and then we'll have to tack it back up with the heat gun so that our top layer gets the strong bond that we want so i went ahead and used some of that bottom color to pour this little one so that's kind of what that bottom color is going to look like that's pretty cool it's it's like a glass minnow sparkly glass minnow. I don't know. Does that make sense? But I do think it'll look kind of neat with the rhinestones. That was kind of the point. Yeah, so let's just kind of take a look at what we have. You can see the blue vein stops there. It's about halfway up the eye. That's going to look really good. And I think we are ready for some stones. So this part is a pain in the butt, not gonna lie. But it's pretty unique, I think. I haven't seen this elsewhere. <laughs> Nobody's dumb enough to do this. So, again, oh, it's upside down. But that's that's literally it. Just put them in there, at kinda at random. So I'm just gonna start here in the tail portion because that's the first part that like sets up completely. Yeah. Just put them in. Ah, man, I really like these stones. I like these better than the purple ones that I used on a, another bait that I did this with. Yeah, and then you can do this with eyeballs, too. So, if you want to create, like, a really cool inner eyeball effect, you know, it's not the same thing as my bait school baits that I make, like, with the little swim baits with eyes inside, but it gives you the multi-layered eyeball look. Now, this is actually easier than doing the bait school thing. Much, much, much easier, actually. You know, because this is essentially just a three-color laminate, and you just put stuff in it. <laughs> You're not pouring little swim baits and then putting those in a big mold, and then, yeah. This is much more easy, in my opinion. And I need more of these little stones, because these make excellent eyeballs for little swim baits. You can use jewelry, essentially, for <clears throat> eyeballs, which I find to be rather neat. Just different, whatever's different, you know? That's what we're all going for here is some uniqueness. Something just got in there. 
What is that? Let's see. It's like some black thing. Got to fish that out. All right, now we have the final piece of the puzzle. So we're gonna tack this up. Again, especially right there at the junction. <clears throat> You'll start to see your uh, rhinestones move around a little bit as you tack it, because the plastic below them kind of starts to slightly melt. Yeah. Okay. Here we go, y'all. Just straight clear. No powder, color, highlight, nothing. Straight clear. Let's get this tail filled in. It's actually difficult pouring straight clear because it's hard to know when you've actually filled the mold all the way to the top. <laughs> You just, you can't really see it on the sides. So it's actually harder than it looks. It looks like I did a little bit too much on the tail, uh, but that's fine. All right, there it is. Now we are now we sit and we wait. I have to let this one sit for a while. Uh, what I've kind of found out is that if I pull it out um, too early, that the tail will actually have a bend in it. So I kind of have to let it set for a good long while um, before it's really safe to pull it out. So we're going to let this sit a while and then we'll come back whenever I think it's ready. Okay, let's try and do this. Um, guess we'll pull it out head first. I'm still learning kind of what the best way is to play with this mold. Okay. Look at that, y'all. Check it out from the side. Yeah, and then the stones. Oh, <laughs> so neat. Such a neat effect. And uh, I'm just gonna kinda let it <clears throat> sit like that. Move that piece of glitter. Get out of the way. Because what I found is if I let it rest on the table it will like dull up the top layer which is the um, clear that you want so yep you can see the tail still kind of has a little bit of a bend in it um, so you know what I guess we'll just put it in the bath then to try to combat that <clears throat> look at that though that looks really like even without the stones, I really like that. That's pretty slick. I like that bottom color. I like the vein. You know, the stones are just kind of an extra little bonus, I guess. Pretty neat. All right, now we're going to glue on some eyes. And I'm going to really glue these on quite well because this is not going to be clear dipped. Um, it's a good idea to glue your eyes in anyways, even if you're going to clear dip. And what I like about this mold is that the eyes are really sunk in. So it's nothing's gonna like brush the eye and, and try to pull it off. And it perfectly fits a 12 millimeter. I mean, you can see that that, I'm pretty sure these are 12s. Don't take my word for it, but call Travis Crossman and ask him. But i um, pretty sure these are 12s. In fact, I hope they are because I ordered a bunch of expensive eyes for this mold. But yeah, there it is. Look at that. And that's just a really cool effect, in my opinion. And it looks really good with eyeballs too. So we're gonna kinda let that glue sit for a minute and then we're gonna put it back in the bath and then we'll play with it later. Okay guys, one more close up look. Yeah, pretty cool. Awesome mold, awesome color. Oh yeah. Absolutely love it. Alright, that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Okay everybody, um, that's kind of my introduction video to the rocket mold. 
uh, you're definitely going to see more of this. And uh, yeah, I said, well, if I'm going to do a video um, about kind of my new little play toy here, I might as well do a cool effect. And um, my wife doesn't like it. She said that this is the perfect bait for like a 14 year old girl. So maybe she's right. I like it though. And uh, you know, you can definitely do it with eyeballs and it won't be so girly, I guess. But uh, yeah, no, I, I really like it a lot. It's a killer bait, killer mold. It's a seven inch bait. Um, so if you guys are looking for a good seven inch swim bait to pour, that's a good one. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so anyway, it's lunchtime. I'm whipped. I have to do a little bit of storm prep just in case we get a lot of rain. Uh, the storm's not going to come here, it's looking like. But we might get a pretty good, you never know when a band of rain is just going to dump and I have to clean out my gutters and all that fun stuff. The joys of being an adult. But uh, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe. Shoot me a bunch of comments below. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll catch you next time.